good morning guys and hope you're all doing well and as you can see we've come back into the redwoods this morning and it's beautiful conditions again we've got beautiful fog and the lights just starting to happen now so i don't want to hang around too long because i think we're going to get, start getting some nice rays and nice light coming through so i'm going to find something to photograph and uh, yeah start start getting into it because it looks as though we're going to get some decent light Now, I've found a shot here, but I'm going to have to work fairly fast because as you can see, the fog is now sort of starting to dissipate and we're getting more light in here. So, I just want to show you the back of the screen now. Let's record. There we go. So, what we've got is we've got these roadies off to the left-hand side here, which are still nicely in bloom. We've got this big redwood in front of me here and then we've got several different... Uh, redwoods all the way around the frame you can also see just over on this right hand side over here I've got two broken ones and I quite like those they just give you a little bit of something different and a little bit more interest you've got the fog off in the background there I'm just gonna keep grabbing shots as we speak though because as I say it's it's happening quite fast we've also got all these ferns and Normally I'd be really tempted to uh, use a polarizer and get rid of a lot of the glare off here but because it's quite wet there's rain falling from the sky or at least moisture falling from the sky the leaves have got a really nice sheen about them and I really quite like that so I want to leave that in place I may take another shot with the polarizer as well just to have it as a record shot and in case I needed to uh, paint any areas in or out so uh, yeah I'm just going to grab another shot. Now you can see I've got it set up as the strip panel here, but I have, I was actually taking it as a 4x3, and I'll just swap that back in a second once this is done. So, the 4x3 shot you can see there has actually got the path in, and it leads in from that right hand side and in and round. And then I've got these roadies off to the left, and then there's a bigger area with with fog and atmosphere in and I really quite like that. I'm just trying to get it though so that there's not any major highlights because as you can see that sunlight is actually coming through now and lighting up the trunks which is quite nice but I don't want it to get too bright on those because it's going to be quite distracting and it's going to take your eye away from everything else that's happening in the frame. But again, I want to put both versions of this up, the strip pano version and the 4x3, and let me know which one you prefer. So guys, it's all happening really fast in here, so I'm having to just work really fast. I'm going to press record on the back of here again. Now again, strip pano, and basically what I've got is I've got these two redwoods either side, framing either side, and then through, you've got two more redwoods off in the distance there. And what I'm actually doing is, as this light is coming through, now it's creating light beams, so I'm underexposing just to make sure I don't blow anything out and I want to retain as much detail as possible there and just grabbing these shots quick because I don't want to lose them but it's so it's so nice in here the temperature is quite warm 
the uh, the colour ban- balance is warm, so all that fog has got a nice warm feel to it. And that works really well against all these redwoods here. They're just absolutely beautiful. So, uh, getting so excited with this because the, the light is amazing in here. So, this is the problem though. When you get amazing light like this, you tend to run around looking for shots and that's probably when you make mistakes. So, it's a, it's a matter of trying to uh, calm that enthusiasm and find shots that actually work for you rather than just grabbing anything because the light's there. I could, it's easier said than done, I can tell you. So yeah, I'm using this strip panel for this. I've got ISO at a thousand at a minute. Um, I'm at F16 at a 50th of the second. And the reason for that is, is there is a little bit of wind movement in here, so I'm trying to freeze any motion. I mean, it's not that bad. Every now and then you'll just get a little breeze through, but it's definitely worth having that shutter speed up just slightly, just to stop any movement happening that I don't want. But yeah, this is absolutely stunning through here. I'm gonna grab this shot and then I'm gonna keep moving on because as I say, I don't wanna, I wanna make the most of these conditions. Just on the way down the path again, I found this scene here. Now, again, we're getting light coming in and that light is quite nice in places. You've also got all that fog going on in the background still, even though it's dissipating slightly. I'm just gonna check that now. Yeah, even at that, I'm still getting little bits of uh, highlights just blowing out. So I'm just gonna underexpose slightly. I'm going to bring the uh, monitor up now. Right, so I'm using the, using the 4x3 for this image and it's it's another one of these images with a path leading through. I've taken quite a few without the path in there but th some of them were working really well like that. And this I noticed yesterday when I was in here scouting this out. There's an old tree back there and um, it's long gone, it's it's long dead, but it's. I just think it, it really stands out against all these other giant redwoods in amongst here. And on top of that, it, there's some lovely um, rhododendrons just to the left of those, of that um, stump as well. And I think that just helps add that little pop of colour. I've got this um, rhody above me here, even though there isn't any flowers on it, it's still acting almost like a frame to the right hand side of the image. It kind of brings you in and I really quite like that. It adds a little bit of interest to that right side, even though it kind of blocks out one of those trees just behind it there. I think looking at this, I mean, it's difficult to tell on the back of the camera, but I like the frame. It, I might change when I get it on a bigger monitor, but as far as I can tell, I really like the look of this image. I like the fact that the uh, the light is now illuminating some of those ferns just by the pathway down there. Now I'm just underexposing by a stop as I say because the sky is quite bright and this fog is starting to dissipate really fast. So I'm just going to grab another one. And it's just a case of moving really quickly because uh, this fog in here, it, it was really thick before and it's, it just keeps moving through but I think it's actually starting to burn off now that the sun is out. So you've got limited time to work. Now I'm at ISO 1000, F16 and I'm at 
fifteenth of a second in here. Now luckily there's no movement whatsoever really, it's just we're getting raindrops but there's no actual wind movement through here. So just grab that shot. So hopefully this shot's turned out. I mean it's there's lots going for it, there's lots of those rhododendrons in there which just add that little splash of colour. I've still got the fog running through there, I've got nice light on those trees. Yeah, I just really like this simple shot. So wow, these beams of light are absolutely amazing. We thought this was done in here and, and now look at it. Absolutely awesome. This is kind of what we were hoping for, hoping would happen, but it's just so spectacular. This light is just exploding in front of us here and it's absolutely beautiful. I've just been stood in this one spot for a long time now because it's just, <laughs> I don't want to move. It may not be there the best composition but I'm just using the light because it's here I've tried in in a couple of other areas here and it doesn't seem to be working the same way as this is here but it just seems to be localised in this one area they've got all these beams and shafts of light coming down so I'm just exposing for the highlights and underexposing by two to three stops just so that I don't blow out these beams that are coming down here. Now, every time I go in there, I'm just checking and making sure on my histogram that nothing's blowing out. And it, it is, I think you, you're always going to get a certain amount because I'm basically pointing directly at the sun here. There's not a great deal I can do about that. But all you can do is expose for the highlights as best you can. Underexposing by three stops now and it's it's just absolutely beautiful i haven't seen anything like this before it's stunning So I've just come further down this hill and this light is just happening all around us here. I want to show you the back of the screen. Just click record. So what you'll see is a 4x3 aspect ratio. I've got this pathway running through and these beautiful god ray beams coming through these trees. And it's just fantastic. I'm underexposing by maybe one to two stops again. I'm at ISO 100 F16. And yeah, just grabbing these shots as they happen because I haven't seen light like this. It's just amazing. 
I just can't stop taking these shots and there's, there's so many around here and they all look absolutely stunning so I've just got to keep firing away grabbing these shots as the light hits so they, we, were, we were ready for leaving and this fog's just come back through and, and lit the place up fantastic been beautiful conditions this morning, eh? Yeah, it's been beautiful. I've been running around like a headless chicken in here. It's, this is the problem I was saying before, though. You, when you get conditions like this, you tend to run around trying to grab shots here, there and everywhere. Yeah. Just to make use of the conditions, and it doesn't always come out in good images, eh? Yeah, and um, this is one of the problems with coming to new areas, is... Um, is being able to slow down because you're so excited because conditions are really good, you know? Yeah, that's what I was like this morning. <laughs> Which way to go next? But yeah, then especially it's, with the rhododendrons. Oh, it's beautiful, beautiful. And I, I, don't, I haven't experienced conditions like this before in any woodland, to be honest. Mm. Even back home, we don't get fog in the woods in, in our area at all. We really. used to get up early, Paul, you know. Well, even when I get up early, we don't get it because it doesn't seem to get as thick as it does here. Well, obviously, we're not on the coast either, and that helps. That's true, yeah, I guess, yeah. Yeah. Coastal fog seems to be a lot thicker, eh? Uh, well, round here, definitely, because you've got the inversion. You, you've got cool air and really hot air, so... Mm. But is this... This one area that we're in, is this the closest one to the sea, is it? Um, as far as I know. Mm. Um, there might be other areas, I'm not sure. Yeah. Well, we'll have to have a explore over the next day or so, eh? Yes. Well, guys, hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Like and subscribe if you have. Um, check out all the workshops that are on my website, which I'll leave in the link dis in the description below there. Check out Adam's channel for the videos he's got up and coming. And I'll see you on the next video soon. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.